Okay. 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 And this is where we delineate, I say, how bad is it? <laughs> and STEMI is the worst. And what does STEMI mean? That's the elevation. All right. If, if there is a significant amount of heart muscle damage, that empty segment is going to go up. And it looks like tombs <laughs> you see it. So, um, you know, there she is. Show them your show. Turn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your okay to come She's an older lady. All right. Okay. So anyway, so in Timmy, all right. So what's the difference between Timmy and Timmy? All right. Are they both heart attacks? Yes. Very good. Both of them will have enzymes that are? All right. All right, so you know all the signs and symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about women and old people. In the back and jaw pain. All right. All right. So now, somebody comes in, they have a chest pain. Look at all these diagnostic things that might happen to them. And we've talked a little extensively about the testing you're going to be tested on, right? But do you remember, why would somebody have a chest x-ray? The enlargement. Enlargement or to see if there's like yeah, other, there. other other like things that could cause that. All right, so we're going to be talking about we talked about a thoracic aortic aneurysm. Mm -hmm. If they have a widened mediastinum or something like that, they could have an aortic tear. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. okay. And so they're going to be a chest X-ray a lot of times, trying to rule out many things. And so I know there's been times that you know we're down there and they're hollering and they are you know they're stat doing the 12 lead, they're getting IVs in, they're doing all these things, and I'm like, can you want a chest X-ray? <laughs> you know, and they're like, well, yeah, dummy. You know, and I was a younger nurse, and I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm like studying. Why are they doing this? And then I asked somebody I trusted, they wouldn't say, duh. But um, anyway, so now, heart cath, I think we beat that to death. All right. Tell me what you know quickly about white cells. Infection, okay, red cells. <coughs> Bleeding. What else about... What else do you know about red cells? Yeah. Very yeah. Very oxygen. Very good. So if you've got a pediatric client who has a congenital heart defect that's cyanotic, such as Tetralogy of Fallot, okay, are they getting a good amount of oxygen in? No. So their perfusion is what? No. Blood. So the body tries to compensate. Your body, God made it. I didn't say God. Somebody made it. <laughs> God. Beautifully. And they, your body knows how to compensate. So what makes your cells? What part? Okay. Bone marrow. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so if your bone marrow makes your cells, red cells and white cells, so do you think your red cells might go up? The bone marrow says, hey, we ain't got enough oxygen in here. Yeah. And so the bone marrow says, dang it, I'm trying to pump this stuff out. So in those babies, if you look at their labs, guess what? Their red cells are going to be what? Elevated. Because it's trying to do what? Compensate for low oxygen. Makes sense? Okay. Now, what's the danger in that? Clot. Okay. So, is it a big deal when those babies get the Absolutely. Do they feel like suck at that big titty? No. <laughs> this is how I get it. I'm sorry, it ain't your style, but it's your style. <laughs> so, you gotta think like that. And so, are they easily dehydrated? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. 
right, anticoagulants because we don't want what? Why stool salt? You don't no do a big down. No straining because when you strain, what do you release? Big See the coupling, and that's your heart rate. And also, after someone has heart surgery, such as cabbage and aortic aneurysm, <coughs> all the, if they cut into somebody's major vessels, do y'all think that might irritate things? Mm -hmm. So, do you think somebody with an irritated heart needs to be bearing down to have a bowel movement? No. Because it can throw them into a what? This Okay, they can bagel out from the release of acetylcholine. You ever seen anybody bagel out? Yes. yes. It's, it's quite interesting when you go to stick them with an IV and they go, oh, I'm sorry. And then this big old man and you left them sitting up in the chair and then you go to stick them and they go, pull. Oh. You know, <laughs> it's terrible. But that is what can happen to little old people when they go to sit and poos and they go to strain when they can have an arrhythmia and die in the hospital. Okay, or they can bagel out and hurt themselves. So when they, do you think them taking their stool software is important? Yeah. So if they tell you, I don't need that, I ain't taking that pain medicine no more, what do you say? Every like What did you say? <laughs> have you heard about our QEP? <laughs> we have um, a quality enhancement plan at the, at the college this semester. <laughs> Now, here's how I remember it. You ready? ALS kills. Do y'all know what ALS is? What's that called? Advanced cardiac What's the easy way to say what ALS is? Oh. <laughs> no. ALS is Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh -oh. Do y'all remember the ice bucket challenge? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Work with me here. You learned something. Hey, we're going to talk all this Okay, y'all ready? All right. ALS. What's A? Attendant. Show up on time. Be punctual. You got it? L. Listen. Actively listen to me. All right. All right. So what do you think that S is? Sit your butt down. And I'm in trouble for this one. Speaking. Speaking professionally. I'm just that. But we really do. That's a quality enhancement plan. And if somebody asks you a credit team wise, buddy, you're going to say ALS and you're going to say attendant, listen, and speak. Okay. And we gotta be professional, but that's for real. No kidding. Okay. <laughs> that was your turn. <laughs> right. So why do you think the still softens, honestly, if they are we can't tie it in stuff, we can't shove it down their throat, even if we want to. You give them green juice. And we want them to have their student softener. It is up there. Yeah. Okay. Are <laughs> okay. right, you with me? All right. We can't take the tea off. <laughs> All right, I just realized that. All right, our process is a little slow. Some of y'all do too. So, is the school software? Yes. So, how do you get competent people who are here voluntarily and to be professional? How do we speak to them and get them to do something they don't want to? Yes, Lord. Okay. Now, why are sedatives important? If you think you might die, because everybody in your family dies of a heart attack, you think they might need a sedative? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at there. If you were wondering which one was integralin and which one was reappraised, look at there. Sorry. We already talked about these. Now, let's talk real quick about um, when someone goes to the test lab and they have an angioplasty or an atherectomy. Is that a word? Or what is it? What's the angioplasty? Balloon. Where they go in there and they're trying to what? Open up. Open it up. Remember, vessels have memory. And so there are times when they don't put a stem in. But there's not many times, but they do. There are times when they'll have a PTCA. What does that stand for? Percutaneous, transluminal, coronary. Angioplasty. Okay, y'all with me? All right. So what's the stem? A piece of metal. It's like a little metal scaffolding. Looks like the stuff you took out of those pins when you took them apart. What's the problem with those? They corrode. They don't corrode. <laughs> they get reocluded because of why? Not taking, water. Not taking their aspirin or whatever anti they were prescribed. 
and then the same same behaviors that they did before, same eating, all that stuff, right? Life of exercise. All right. So I ain't going through this because the preparation for a PTCA is the same as what? A heart cath. Are they going to the cath lab? Mm -hmm. What is this one a little more dangerous? Think about it. It is because the sheath is what? The sheath that they put in to feed the wire and go up there with the balloon, does it have to be bigger? Yep. Yeah. All right, is there a chance that they can not knock some of that plaque off? Mm -hmm. yes. And if that plaque travels somewhere, do y'all realize that when they do that balloon angioplasty or that atherectomy where they actually take a laser and laser the plaque off of the lining, they don't vacuum it up. I was like, they don't vacuum it up? And they thought that was so funny. Um, when I was a young nurse, I'm not like y'all. I was not sometimes things just kind of come out of me. And um, they said, no, we don't. And I said, where does that go? And they go, it goes to smaller vessels downstream. And I'm like, and they're like, well, the big one's more important. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay. That's just not the same right. And they're like, well, why do you think we have them on these and, um, IV aspirins? And they're like, the Rio Pro, I'm like, and I was like, I'd have been more tense if I'd have known this. And so, <laughs> just saying, it's important that y'all understand that after someone has a balloon angioplasty, there's a risk that they can do what? Have another what? Heart attack? Can they have a stroke? Can they lose circulation to their leg? Yeah. Yeah. Can they bleed out? Same thing. So, you with me? All right. Make sure you know. So, what's the most, we talked about this yesterday. What is the most important thing when they come back from that heart cat? I hear I'm rolling them in your room. Bleeding. Bleeding. And so what are you looking at first? Y'all ain't any color. I'd be like, I'm looking at they grown. And I, it's our first day. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> if it was a groin, it might have been it's usually a groin. It's usually a like groin. I mean, your radio. It's like always groin. It's like fun place groin. It's not fun place. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. If typically, if they're going to do a big procedure or a complete heart cath, you guys, they're going through the groin. Okay. Because do you think it's kind of hard to take a guide wire through here and make it where you need to? Yes. There are some little hot rods that are real good at that, but you know. all right. I've seen them start radio and go back to the groin many times. Mm -hmm. All right. So we made it. So let's do really quick life. Next fellas, I've added something this semester thanks to um, me and Ms. Healy. Both of you I have one on my team of dynamics. We're going to have to add one. <laughs> I did one on that. He did one on that for a class. Okay, y'all ready? You got yeah. your phones? Y'all yeah, can group up if you want to when you're doing this. Because you got to know what you y'all want, classic or team? Uh -huh. We do right side, left side. Classic, make a decision. Roll. Okay. 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 Okay.
Oh, it's not. Hmm? Ordinary artery disease. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Only three got it right. <laughs> Two points back. All right, so what's that answer? Conclusion. Yellow. Yellow. Okay. So in a semi, there's a significant amount of what? Blockage. So how much blockage is there, class? <laughs> now you do. And four. Hey, what's the first What's the first one the I'll put it next Yeah, I didn't mean to. I, I mean, I just automated made it and EKG. They have chest pain. <laughs>
Hello. 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 H
jugular, subclavian, you know, all them places. Y'all with me? All right. I'm going in. I'm at the superior vena cava. Where am I driving to next? Y'all are driving. Right atrium. Do we have to go through a door? Okay. And then from there, where are we at? Right ventricle. Okay. Are we close? Are we there yet? Mm -hmm. We ain't there yet? Almost. And then from the right ventricle, where are we going? Pulmonary. Bow. Pulmonary where? Bow. Pulmonary Bow. where? Bow. Bow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to the pulmonary artery? Pulmonary artery? Yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all in big trouble. Great. Okay, I'm glad I did this. Okay. So y'all are driving me and you don't even know where we're going. Great. Great. And I am not good at that either. No. All right. So we went from the right atrium to the tricuspid valve, didn't we? Yeah. We hit that right ventricle and that heart, that right heart pumps deoxygenated low we know. To the lung. To the lung. Yeah. But we got to go there through the pulmonary or artery. Or because the pulmonary artery carries what kind of blood? Deoxygenated. Deoxygenated. To the lung. Okay. So where did I tell you that this old fancy Cadillac of central line is called a swan? We got a swan. And the swan is called a pulmonary artery catheter. Mm -hmm. And if it's called a pulmonary artery catheter, where's the darn thing sit? Pulmonary artery. Did we make it there? Yeah. Okay. So now, so instead of this central line sitting up there at the superior vena cava, oh my God, that kind of creeps me out. The darn thing is like all the way through my heart, just kind of waving and hanging out there. <laughs> Honestly, in the pulmonary artery. Well, the good part is when you're when they're inserting this, uh, we don't insert this. Do y'all remember you do not insert this? But you have this huge role, and that is setting everything up and assisting with the insertion. All right. Big big safety issue for you is that it has to be done sterile. Everything is sterile, and you're going to see a video that's going to show you that. That's what they got. So, just like a regular central line, this is a commonality, and this will help you. When they put a regular central line in, can you just go ahead and jump and use it? No. What has to happen prior to the But it's just it's right. It's just Oh, yeah, we do. Ooh. You ain't, you, you, yeah, we do. I okay. thought that, and they were like, oh, don't listen to people in the ER. Don't, don't, <laughs> them doctors will take your license and run. I don't know. I've seen a central line going to the school nurse. Uh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Okay. Okay, y'all. All right, so now, the catheter sitting where? In my well, primary artery. artery. I got to ask you a question. I ask you a question. Okay, the end of the, at the end of this catheter is a balloon. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about this. Does blood constantly pump through the heart? Yes. 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 So when they're inserting the central line, they are watching. They hook it. Go ahead and hook it to your patient monitoring system, okay, as it's going in. And so when you get into the right atrium, a waveform hits, okay, that's when the person inserting it is going to know to blow up the balloon. So that that blood that's pumping, what does it do to the balloon? It says, hey, you want to float on with me? And so the balloon, being blown up, goes through the tricuspid valve, floats to the right ventricle, and when it waveform gets bigger, because the ventricles are larger than the what? Atrium. And we will know we are in the ventricles when that waveform gets taller. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guess what? That waveform changes when that balloon reaches the pulmonary artery because is that smaller yeah. than the ventricles? Mm -hmm. And probably even smaller than the atria, right? So it's even shorter than the waveform you saw previously. Okay, you with me? This is how we can tell where that thing's at. It's happened for B. What do you think happens to the pulmonary artery as it heads to the lungs? Do y'all remember your anatomy? 
right. So what little bitty vessels are in the lungs that starts with a C? Okay. So the pulmonary artery is you get to there and that pulmonary artery is getting smaller and smaller and smaller because it's going into the lung. Right? You with me? Make sense? So what happens when you got this balloon and it starts getting to a smaller and a smaller place? Does it wedge up in there? Okay, so it wedges up in there. So the waveform does what? It gets really small. And you go, oh, we wedge you. And so that's when we get our pulmonary artery wedge pressure. But this will scare the crap out of you. You ready? You have just cut off all blood supply to the lung when that wedges. Every bit of it. And we're doing it on purpose. Because if you cut off and make the blood static, stop, everything stop. Guess what we can capture is a straight tunnel to the left side of the heart. Straight tunnel. We can feel the pressure through the capillary system because those capillaries are connected, aren't they? Because what happens at the capillary level when we have an exchange of oxygen and what? Yeah. And so then we pick up all our oxygen we jump into where for the blood flow after we release it and let it back. <laughs> we do have to do that within a few seconds, just saying. I hold my breath when we wedge. Because what do I know? We just cut off blood supply completely to where? The to the lung. Mm -hmm. To the lung. Okay? Body artery. All right, and so we're capturing what side of heart pressure when we do a PAWP or what do we call it? A pulse. Mm -hmm. When we get a pulse reading, what side of the heart are we reading? What pressure? Left side. Left side. So let me ask you this. So we don't have to wedge to get a pulmonary artery pressure, okay? Because that thing just sitting there in the pulmonary artery. All right. The so pulmonary artery pressure is also telling me left-sided heart pressure. Which one do you think is the most accurate and wonderful pressure? Pop. Pop. Because what have we done? We've eliminated, we've stopped all that forward flow and all that extra pressure of that blood is going. So it's a more accurate reading of, are you ready for this? Preload. What is preload? Like, what did I teach you preload pretty much told you? Volume. Mm -hmm. Volume. I always say volume. Preload is volume. But actually, it's the volume that's causing the stretch, right? What causes the heart to stretch? Blood. So if you've got a lot of blood or volume, is it going to cause the pressure to go up? Mm -hmm. Is it? What if you are hypovolemic and you have no volume because you've had diarrhea and vomiting and all that? So it's going to be low. Just like when we were talking about CVP. Do y'all remember last semester when we talked about CVP? It's also known as, y'all tell me. Pressure, venous pressure. What side of the heart is CVP? Right. Right. right side. Okay. So if I'm in right sided heart failure, is that the right side of my heart? Okay, and I have this fancy catheter that can tell me CVP. What do you think the CVP reading, what's normal? Well, we learned 1A, but what is it this semester? 2 to 6. Two to six. So if I have right-sided heart failure, what do you think my reading is going to be? I have right-sided heart failure where you've got a bunch of fluid coming in, right? People with heart failure have what? A lot of what? Fluid. 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 It's greater than six. Greater than six. So what pressures are we looking at for the left side of the heart? There's two of them. We call them pat and paw. So pat is a pulmonary artery pressure just like a what? Blood pressure. So it has a Systolic mm -hmm. and, and a what? Diastolic. Diastolic. 
And what is the common number when you look at systolic and diastolic? 5 to 15. 15. 15. Because what's the systolic? 26. 15 to? 26. And what is the diastolic? 5 to 15. 5 to 15. Y'all better marry them. You put it on your refrigerator. You put it next to your bed. You put it in your car. You put it in your pocket. And then the That's how I learned my number. I put them everywhere. And I said, and I told them I had no bell. I had no bell. I had bad off campus. And y'all work with me. I'm very different. I told myself, I can't get in the shower. She can do it with the bell bells. I'm like, dang. I'm like, dang. I'm like, dang. So I did them no bell. And I will not get in my car until I did them. So you put your readings up by where you brush your teeth and you go, you ain't brushing your teeth. So you can look at those and then turn around and not look at them. No cheating with the mirror. And you have to say them all right before you brush your teeth. You can't get in the bed until you say I'm right. You can't get in the car until you say I'm right. <laughs> I'm I'll tell late. you what, I don't have any time either, but you better watch them. Because I promise you, you're going to have to apply them, because I'm going to have you apply them. You ready? You got a pee first. You got a pee first. Okay, so let's take a break. 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 With the with the cup, it the systolic and the diastolic. But with the wedge, I think it's just the blood is the blood is separated and it is separated. It's stuck in the blood, and you can measure the preload before it goes into the hole. Yeah, so the most accurate thing you can do without cutting off the blood. Yeah, because it just measures it. It's one of them. Yeah. So, but these are the same. These are the same. This can be what I'm saying. This balloon can be inserted inside of the pot. Is it already connected to the pot and being able to blow it, when you blow it up, this specific way? Well, how I got it is such a line and how it's the same thing. It's more than a little bit of a thing. But then it's one to be the top of the line. But essentially, it's one to be the top of the line. But it's one to be the top of the line. But it's one to be the top of the line. Yeah, they're saying that we're measuring the left, the left side of the, the heart. Oh no, because I might be confusing. <laughs> Let me know what she's saying. Uh, where's she go? Where's she go? Does she not answer you when your hand is raised? I'm like, how about Hannah? You calm down, girl. Oh, oh, oh. 
I'm thinking about random and shit and then the I don't want to spend too much time with old shit. And then the and scr- scrambling to learn the. You don't know how intense those processes are. I have the last part of the first week of the year. Yeah. And, uh, it was just so
Where do we start? I'm confused.